everybody. Welcome back to Two Girls on Pod. I'm Angelie Bernice Kent, for those of you who have been playing along at home. And I'm recording from Gadigal Land. And I'm Evie Jones. I'm beautiful. And I'm recording from Wurundjeri Land. That you, you are. Thank you for having me. That you are, Evie Jones. That you are. Ah. Uh. So, should we just dive straight into it, do you think? Or do you have any updates for me about your life and things of that nature? I did have an update, but I can't remember. You know what we've spoken oh, about? We need to start yeah. saving things to our notes because you and I have bad memories. I know, I know. I right, well, I know. What I'd like to just touch on just quickly mm. is they've brought the first promo out for the challenge and we <gasps> are losing our tiny minds about it because it looks so good. It is everything that reality TV is supposed to be. It looks salacious. It looks gossipy. It looks bitchy. It looks... Um, Wrong, it Dot looks com. right, it looks... And this is shot in a... Like, they've got a budget on this one, so... Chef's kiss yeah. all round. <laughs> we know it's an wait. American budget. We know it's American production. We know it's American show, so we know it's going to be next level because there's one thing that Americans in the UK can do, and that is reality television. We just can't do it like they can. Well, we I've just got to can't. say, though, I've just got one little word for you. Maths. Okay, Everyone that's true. is trying to do our maths. Like it's like we've never been able to do good reality TV, and then when we finally did, it was hold my f- yes. cocktail that's and so white true. wine because there is no none better than our maths. Yeah, like no one. I mean, the English are getting it right now because you know you're a little freak. You're a little freak. I am. You're a little freak. No, the English one would be so good because they've got so many different so types of English people, right? Whereas Australians, yeah. like, kind of all have the same accent. They all kind of look the same because yeah. they only pick yeah. white people. It's a sad one, but no, they do. they don't. They don't. They're, like, they always have Asian girls. Yeah. And they... That, um, it's not really spreading their they, wings a whole lot, though, They sometimes choose rangers. Um, so, you know, that's a bit harsh, isn't it? Yeah. On them. It's a bit... Racist of you? No, no, you're right. They they do only pick a lot, mostly, mostly white. white. But yeah. that's our country, you know, but the it, diversity. But that's sad because it's not. We have so many all people from all walks of life. But that's yes, right. they do. They've got to look harder. They do got to look harder. But they probably they're have more not looking hard at all. They're just getting freaks because they do not do their due diligence. Remember Simon Blackburn. Oh God! This is the guy who got on the show. They were filming everything, and, the, and it then was he got the cut, can't. wife that had to find all of that stuff out. Why did they not know? Uh, you know, they do knew. your due diligence. Well, they couldn't have because they had to get rid of him. They should have, if they'd known and and thought this is brilliant, they would have kept him on and ceremoniously got rid of him, which is what I predicted was going to happen in it. No, they had to get rid of of him because everybody signed petitions and shit. Remember that time? And I was like one of the leads of spreading, like, get him cancelled, otherwise the show needs to be, like, get him off, otherwise we shouldn't. And then everybody started doing it and we all, like, signed shit and he had to get cancelled. Like, he got cut off. Yeah, but we've had plenty of petitions for mass and it's done nothing. Yeah, I don't know. I think they would have known. You, you research. All you have to write in is Simon Blackburn and he's all over the internet before he mm. was even on maps. Like, you have producers specifically for that. I don't believe they didn't know. I reckon they thought it was going to be great and then he already yeah. had problems with people like me and other people and then they were like, wow, this is really fucking bad what he has done. It yeah. wasn't like funny bad where it's like a one time. I, he was saying horrible stuff about yeah. Gays, yeah. Asians, yeah. fat yeah. people, black yeah. people. Like, that was, Maybe that's too far. Maybe it was a legal far. thing. They had to get rid of him for legal reasons. Yeah. The thing is, with the women's stuff, th- they'd happily just let that slide because women, they, they think that's funny to be sexist to women. We think it's, oh, it's mm. so funny. It's but funny. as soon as they yeah, did the fine. homophobic and the racist, that's when they it was like. Couldn't get away with that. They couldn't get yeah. away. Anyway, with that too, we saw, we also, not that we want to give him any shout outs, but to see that he's having another child, God yeah, save God. our souls. What Just sort no. of a woman would like no. lower herself to want to breed with that piece of shit? It actually well, gives me like anxiety. There's a lot of them. There's no, a lot of some dickheads around as well. You know, this is what we're fighting against, Angela Bernice, and we will fight against it till the the very day last we breath. die. Exactly. But yeah, the but challenge looks great. There's lots of really wait. great people that are just made for reality TV. Um, on I do there. have a d- moral dilemma for you. Uh, looks, that's coming out in November. Guess what else is coming out in November? Oh no. Oh no. Snackmasters, my oh, show. Imagine going up just, against the challenge. Just a quick, 
Just a quick question. What are you going to watch live? Because you can watch them both, obviously, but there's one that's going to you're going to give ratings to and there's one that you're not. Well, obviously yours, girl. You lie. <laughs> uh, you just the way you shifted your – I hope we got this on video and we're going to put this up on our Instagrams because you – Tickled, you scratched your underarm and you looked to the left and to the right and went, well, obviously yours, girl. No. It was the most, like, if there was a body behavioralist, a psycho yeah, fully. The analyst here, he would have just gone, oh, my God, the, the, the things went off the chart. Yeah. I got sweatier too. My throat yeah. started to clog up. You went red in the face. <laughs> Everything, everything. You, <laughs> you are so watching the challenge. No, <laughs> because the challenge will be one of those shows that's on three nights a week or something, and I can just like binge it when I'm getting yeah, ready. Mine's on two. Yeah. No, that's easy. I'll just watch yours at the night time, and then I'll binge challenge when I'm getting ready for work and stuff. See, I've already got it planned out. I'm a sicko when it comes to my shows. I have like a schedule. I have a rotation. I'm, 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 I'm the same. Please, we you need don't it. Have to. You're like, you don't have to shout it at me. I'm well aware and I'm the same. (laughs) Relax. (laughs) We have spreadsheets. We know this about us. That's so cool. Anyway, talking of lesbians, (laughs) did you? (laughs) Great segue. (laughs) Have you seen um, (laughs) Scooby-Doo has a new movie and (laughs) Velma is finally out and proud as a lesbian, which I'm really, really excited about. And the crowd went wild. I'm so Ooh. happy about that. She always seemed like such a lesbian, didn't she? And she just yeah. never owned it. Well, the, you know what? The well, writer never let the her own writer, it. No, the writer – well, let me tell you a few things about yeah, it. Yeah, tell d- me. D- look at me. Yeah. Okay, let me tell you about this. Did you know her last name is Dinkley? What's that got to do with anything? Say her whole name. I just love it. Like, what a brilliant name. Oh, Velma Dinkley. Velma Dinkley. Mm. Mad Hi, my name's Velma Dinkley. Because I think that's her voice. I don't know about that. I think it is. Anyway, it's official. Velma Dinkley's preference for girls has finally been confirmed in the new animated film Trick or Treat, Scooby-Doo. And she even gets a girlfriend in the form of a glamorous new character, Coco Diablo. You know Diablo means devil in Spanish. Oh, yummy. What a great name, Coco Diablo. Such a great name. Who is the head of a costume crime syndicate and the villain in the movie. No no wonder she's called Diablo. Um, In the early 2000s, so this is is what you're going to find interesting. In the Mm. early 2000s, when Warner Brothers made two live-action Scooby-Doo movies, as we remember, the screenwriter James Gunn, who's the guy who wrote Guardians of the Galaxy, attempted to portray her as an out and proud lesbian, but the studio was having none of it. Oh, scandalous. So I'd say the writers for even the 70s from the Scooby-Doo um, animated film, I mean, you know, um, cartoons, they would have been like going, yeah, she's a lesbian and we can't do anything. We can't make it out and proud. So we'll just, you know, make sure – like. Back in those days, you we, there was a show. I don't know if you've ever even heard of it. It was called H and R Puff and Stuff. Mm. H yeah. R Puff and Stuff. Stuff. Da, yeah. da, 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 Puff and da, 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 Stuff. Yeah. So the kid, he had like a magic um, ch- mm. fiddle, not fiddle. Whatever. What do you call these things? Flute. <laughs> flute. Um, which I think was called. I think the kid was called Jimmy, or the flute was called Jimmy. I can't. Anyway, everything in the movie. Everything in the show was, um, and like it was about drugs. The whole show was about drugs. H and R puff and stuff. Yeah. Um, witchy poo was like it was just everything was thinly veiled drug paraphernalia. Um, and you know we all know this stuff now, but maybe Scooby Doo was you know the same for who knows what. But the funny thing for me is that. People are losing it about, obviously, because people do lose their shit when this happens. Oh, Velma's a lesbian. This is what it's going to corrupt the children, blah, 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 blah. You know, friend Daphne, they've been doing it and you know it. They were getting it on ever since that shit came out. And no one had a problem with that, did they? And what about old mate whose best friends were Scooby-Doo? He was always yeah, like shaggy, shaggy shagging. Shaggy's probably. always shagging girls and always hitting on girls. You know, it's like creepy, like, oh, Scooby Doo, I'm the little girl over there. Like, gross. <laughs> do, you me, do you want me to say, speak to you in Scooby Doo? For how long? My mother, my bitch. Imagine if you did 
through the whole episode. <gasps> I'm going to. Oh, I would die a thousand deaths in that. <gasps> I'm dying a thousand deaths. Raggy. Ruby loves Raggy. Oh, so <laughs> stupid. What a dumb movie, but God, it's good. God, it's good. Oh, you know Shaggy stoned the entire time. Oh, stoned, That's predator not a vibes. Just all of it. But God Had forbid a, they we all have, have a, a lesbian. Van. Yeah, got getting bloody high in that van. He's best friends with a dog who talks. The dog's also a bit creepy. Yep. It's all yep. a bit so sus. I think Velma being a lesbian is the least of their problems. I think they, what they've got to worry about is the big, lanky stoner who only hangs out yeah. with dogs all the time. Yeah, has a really big <laughs> van. Yeah. <laughs> But and like has a flavor saver. Yeah, he does too. Oh my god. Ooh. But obviously, you know, other people who are fans of the show and are up with the 2022 uh, are they saying that she's a queer icon. So that's yeah, nice. That I think that nice. she is a queer icon. She's been around forever. She's always been this smart, sexy little freak and now she's our little queer lesbian icon in the franchise <laughs> that we all know and love. <laughs> You know what? Is there other queer representation in children's media of today? Like, you know, this is going to start becoming a really big thing. Do you not think? I hope so. I think it'll start being such a thing where it's like we're not even going to have to talk about it anymore because it's just going to be like straight couples. It's like, cool, like, great. Yeah. We're qu- like, you know, queer the, couples. Exactly. It's And it's just getting used to seeing things like anything in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Disney Pixar's Buzz Lightyear that came yeah. out this year has a same-sex kiss between two supporting characters. That's a very nice thing to see. 90s TV kids show Arthur. Remember that show? I loved it. Is that? It was a sweet show. Uh, um, hey, what a wonderful t- kind of day when you learn to work and play and get along with each other. Did that go up until 2019? Yeah. Far out. I used yeah. to watch that show every day after school. I was yeah. obsessed with Arthur and his shitty little sister. What was her name? God, she was a <gasps> What was her name? DW. She was such a turd. Her name's DW? DW. Don't worry. Oh, my God. I did not know that. I only ever watched it, like, as an adult when I was a nanny. She was great. She was so mean. And then he had his best friend that was kind of a bigger version of him. He always remind me of someone I went to school with. I won't say who, just in case they listen, which I doubt they would. But um, say it then. Say it. Oh, ain't nah. a shame. No, oh, you know you want to. All right. Well, let me tell you this, Mr. Ratburn, and um, has from Arthur has married his oh, husband, he's Ard- awesome. and he's an aardvark chocolatier named Patrick. That makes me, oh, my God, and his friends Buster, Muffy, and Francine. Oh, I loved this show. Oh, they crashed the wedding. They crashed the wedding. I'm so happy that Arthur was still going up until 2019 and that they had gay representation on that show because that show has been around forever and it was such kind of like a, I wish it's a great show. Bloody great show. National Coming Out Day is on the 11th of October every year. So that's already happened. Yeah, um, that was last week. Happy National week Coming Out Day to everyone that came out this year. Um, congratulations, or I don't even know what to say. I mean, it's it's a funny one. I don't think that I should talk about it as a straight person, but the one th- problem that I have with the coming out day is that we have a coming out day when we don't have a coming out day for straight people because it is the norm. Mm. I wish that we didn't have to come out in any way for yeah. anyone because, you know, I watched this video of this girl um, cutting a cake in front of her parents and she says, I made this cake. And they were like, oh, that's really pretty. What is that? What is that? A flag? Like that a rainbow on that? She said, yeah, I made it because um, I wanted – Today is National Coming Out Day and I wanted to let you both know that I'm a lesbian. And they went, oh, honey, that's so nice. And she just burst into tears because she was so relieved that she'd said it. And they were like, yeah, we think that's wonderful. And then the mum started going, the gay moms are my favourite moms at school. Like, you know, they were, yeah. and she's like, don't cry, honey. And she's kissing her and she's crying more and everything. I mean, the fact that someone gets so emotional or frightened about coming out it breaks my heart that I wish, I hope one day we live in a world where it's it's not announced because 
if it is announced, then we need to start announcing whether we're straight or not. Mm. You know, that that street interview that's so old now where people were being asked, do you think being gay is a choice? Um, a lot of people who said, the people who said it, uh, yeah, I think it's a choice. They would like, the, the interviewer would say, so when did you decide that you were straight? Yeah. Made them immediately get it. It's like, well, um, I just knew. It's like, well, yeah, they, they mm-hmm. like, they exactly. just know as well. We will get to that point, but I do yeah. think we should celebrate the baby but steps, it's yes, which I, is the fact that we are celebrating people being able to come out and not having to hide. I guess that's a yes. step in itself. And I yes. love seeing everybody's stories on social media. I'm mad for a day of celebration. So the Me fact too. that um, you could see, you know, people's stories, they could share it, whether it was a beautiful story or a struggle, it's nice for people to have a space where they can share their yeah, coming out story. And especially if there is a particular day and it's something that you can work towards and, you know, have something ready if that helps you, it's yeah. wonderful that we have that for for people. Um, you know, you're queer. Yeah, yeah, I am. The end. <laughs> Do you remember coming out? Uh, not really. I think I just always started just talking about, I've always said I'd fall in love with the soul. I just never really dated anybody mm. other than cis het men. Um, mm. And then I think it was after my breakup, my public breakup, I was on Kyle and Jackie O., and I touched on it there and no one really knew, but I'd spoke about it before Bachelorette. They just never promoted it because I was only dating men. And mm. then there was like all articles everywhere being like, Angie's pansexual. But I kind of always knew that, well, I knew I was. And mm. then I spoke about it more, I think, on this podcast when we first mm. started. I was like, it was more of a platform for me to then not to feel prodded that I had to share that part of me. Like I just felt safe enough to do it and now I just talk about it. At first I was really funny with talking about it because I guess the Catholic guilt and Mm, my family don't really talk about it with me. My mum, my dad and I have never spoken about it. Apparently he says, he said to my mum he doesn't care. He's like, I just want it like as long as she's happy. Mm. But, um, yeah, we don't ever talk about it. Like Josh and I would, my brother, he's gay, um, as you know, but for those who don't. Yeah, so my mum and I have kind of touched on it, but it's one of those things where, like, she loves me, obviously, no matter what, but I think deep down she would still low-key hope that I end up with a cishet man. It's interesting. I think she'll be happy no matter what, but, you know, it's just that internalised thing where it's like yeah. You, yeah. you just want there, what's normal in their exactly. eyes. And exactly. the Catholic thing really throws yeah. her, I think. Yeah, but no. Yeah. And all my friends yeah. were fine with it. They were just like, cool, like, yeah, we could see you being with anyone. You've never been the sort of person that was, like, yeah. obsessed with dudes or and you've always just done whatever you wanted to do. So they were like, yeah. cool. So there. they were like, get yeah. in there. Have you ever been to India? Get that India. <laughs> um, but how funny was it when we first met that I thought you were a lesbian with Tourette's and it turns out I'm the lesbian with Tourette's. Yeah. Yeah. True. That's a good true. time. That What a, like, that was what a flip. Yes. I know. And <laughs> I certainly didn't take offence to that at all. <laughs> So, I, like, I wonder how many pe- other people think that about me. Well, a I, lot of people thought we were together until, you know, we made it very clear that we weren't. But um, on yeah. Gogglebox, it was never said. It just was Angie and Evie. And yeah. we lived together. We were on the, you know, lounge and there were other couples in the show. Yes. So there was a lot of people who have said to me, you know, I just assumed. Yeah, we or did. Or would say to their friends, no, yeah, they're a couple. Yeah, they would ask too. They were like, is that your partner? And I'm like, no, that's mm. my best friend. Or they'd say, is that your sister? Some would say, is that your mum? <laughs> I'd say, no, she's not my mother. <laughs> I'm older than her. That's weird. That's so weird. <laughs> so weird. But, um, um, yeah, that when yeah. I first met you, I just, I don't know, I think because you were so, like, okay with being single and you were so confident mm. and then you were, like, my first friend, like, mm. girlfriend here. Because everybody Mm. was so hard to chat to because it was just, I don't know, Sydney people were weird and um, not very friendly and I would talk to anyone. And Mm. I don't know, I guess because you just would call me and stuff. I was like, maybe this girl loves me. But you just loved me. You weren't in love with me. Yeah, no, I was. (laughs) No, I certainly was not. I just felt really sorry for you. (laughs) (laughs) That's what it 
one. <laughs> Bitch needs a friend. Yeah, I'll, I'll smother her with love. And then here I am, I being like so like <sighs> blissfully unaware, thinking you were like in love with me, but you were just like blessed. I feel sorry for her. Bless this mess. She needs a friend. No, no, my God. I just found a complete soulmate in inappropriateness that is was just so impressive to me that I finally because I'd had so many friends who were oh don't say that oh don't talk about that oh that's gross oh my god that is so disgusting like you know they would really look down on some of my humor you were the first person that never blinked an eye would actually go I'm not mad I'm impressed yeah and I'm like, what is this? I Angel like enabled from- you. I enabled your bad behavior. <laughs> yes. And it just got worse and worse and worse, which is fantastic still to this day. Oh, so look, we're still standing. I, I reserve all of my inappropriateness for you. Although, you know, I tried on other people. Just, just, it's my litmus test. Oh, I want to see I how love far it. I can go. I love watching people just squirm or tick and their little brains yep. just be like, wait, is she serious? Is this okay? Yes. And I'm like, it's not okay, but you're here and you have to sit yes. with this. That's right. That's, oh God, it's so good. The, um, the only, I, the only other person I've ever found is recently my producer on Snack Masters. She's very similar to you in that sense. That, oh, really? Um, she would just like, she'd be, I'd see her behind the camera when I'd be doing any really inappropriate things just to get the guy, the poor, the, it would always be this poor factory work it had to be on camera with me who was so nervous. They were always so nervous and I would say these really inappropriate things and I'd look past because um, she'd be shaking with like trying, like holding her nose and you'd see others going, oh, and but they'd, I'd always put at ease the guy next to me who would often then say, Oh, good. That's kind of set the scene. <laughs> like I can be really, you know. You're like um, doing it to try to make them kind of. Me, yeah. Calm. I'm like, I'm. There is nothing you can do or say that is going to be worse <laughs> than me on camera. And everything we say that's wrong is going to be edited out. Yeah. And they would get that when I would say something so wildly inappropriate. And that and But Emma, she would be just like going. <laughs> makes my whole day like it just makes my whole day and then like I did with you I would just keep seeing how many levels how far I could you go could to go. with her and yeah apparently you both have like glass ceilings so I like it <laughs> it's just never ended the sky's the limit yeah not even glass ceilings open ceilings <laughs> Those louvers, louver glass that just open up and I can keep going through. Uh, but even if I do think it's too far, like it's always forgiven. Like it's just, yeah. it's like tomorrow's a new day and I can't wait yeah. for more. Yeah. And it's just, well, when you know me, you know that it's anything is, if it's funny. You will do it. Yeah. You but I do there. get that not everyone gets that. So that's why you have to pick your audience. You do, and you've picked yours very. Well. You've picked your victims very well, Evie Jones. I've, I have picked my victims. <laughs> I've picked my nose. I've picked things that I probably should never pick. <laughs> oh God! And I'll leave it at that. Shall I? Oh, that was brilliant. <laughs> this has gone. This has gone to a circus level. What are you? That's not their luck. Me and you. We're not alone. Tell me you feel. feel it okay. Too. I've also, I have one more thing to ask you. Yes. Did you start watching Bad Sisters like I told you to? Sorry, sister. Because you are going to love it. So I finished it. It's brilliant. What's it on it's, again? It's on Apple. Just, oh, that's the one I don't have. Well, just get it because you know what? It's worth it. You're worth it. Yeah, I do need a new show to obsess over that doesn't involve You will me really up. like it and it's and it's Irish and it's about women and it's women's themes and you will really, really like it. All right, I'll put it on We Lost. Promising. All right, everybody. Um, That's enough out of you, Evie, please. We've got places to go, people to see, documentaries to watch. So, I knew that you could do that. I, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks for listening. Have the day you deserve. Follow mm. us on the socials. If you don't want to, you don't have to, but you know what? Please do. Do it. Just do it. It's 
I don't know. It's good. Do it. Do it. Read my lips. Do it. Oh, Melissa Couch. Shout out to you, girlfriend. Girlfriend. Bye. Bye. Bye.